we digress. Um, moving it back to marketing then, or <laughs> moving it back to digital marketing <laughs> and SEO then, um, there's a lot changing right now in the SEO space um, and digital marketing as well. You know, yes. The advent of AI has brought some right. amazing capabilities and some worrying capabilities. And, and now Google are trying their best to kind of navigate that whilst, with, whilst trying not to stifle people's innovation too much. What do you see as being some of the yeah. emerging trends coming up that that will impact i guess let's let's keep this to to your passion area of local business more than more than national or international business so how is how are those changes impacting on local business seo and digital marketing i think that a lot of he, like chat gpt um for example is a tool like anything else um but i think that a lot of people use it as a replacement real quick let me see how many thousands of blogs I can do and, and release over here so I can get content out. And uh, without really paying attention to, is it helpful? Uh, is Does this actually have substance? Is it something that's going to enhance whoever's you know coming into to reading it? And I think that this tool is great to, and lots of other junior AI, I don't know if you know that one, um, lots of AI tools that, that help with blog writing um, I feel like it's a double-edged sword. Lots of people think that it's a cop-out, easy way to go ahead and and do something real fast, and I don't need to do anything. Um, while other people are using it and also adding a human touch to it, looking through, reading, facts checking, um, really making sure that what comes out is high quality. So, in in these with with AI and local business, I think blog writing is is a great way to add keywords to be able to help also provide helpful information to your clients. Um, you know, for they just got a deck installed, uh, you know, let's write about how to take care of that deck. So giving them tips and advice is great for the client. And it's also good for, for Google to try to, to get keywords for your website. Um, AI is a great thing. Just use it wisely. Good advice, which which mirrors, you know, we've had some interesting guests on the show around AI, and I think back to, it must have been episode five or six, um, we had the guys from Content at Scale on the show, and it's one of the few AI-based engines, I don't know whether you're familiar with it or not, but it's one of the few AI-based engines that I've seen that mm -hmm. really goes to that next level to try and make sure that all the human elements are added to it so that you get the final 5%, 10% done. But even they said, you know, like what we've created, it's not meant for bulk creating all of these fantastic pieces. It's meant to take away all the mundane yeah. stuff that you don't want to do. So, you know, for example, interlinking your articles, right? Like I know I should be interlinking my articles when I write my newsletter and my blog and I put it on the website. And who's got time for that? Right. That's the problem that, that a lot of people come to. Right. Um, but you're right. Like once you get to that point, you go, oh, actually, you can do that for me. What else can it do for me? And then you start to get lazy. And as humans, we'll always take the path of least resistance until our fingers yeah, get burned. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but then likewise, I was <laughs> I was talking with uh, James Dooley the other week and one of his team had gone on on, on a personal mission to, to promote content through AI at uh, ridiculous quantities and had, as a result, been blocked by Google yeah. as a developer. At developer level, he'd been shadow banned. And every website he'd been responsible for being a, a marketing engineer on, even if only by association as, as having mm -hmm. his name on the account, were immediately blacklisted by Google. So I think there are some very serious wow. repercussions to think about. It was 120 websites, yeah. I think it was, that yeah. we were trying to reclaim. There is an ethical and a moral compass that people need to have when they're using tools like AI. I always believe that everything that you do in online, in any aspect of digital marketing, uh, you should always have it with the end user, whether it's the client, whoever it is, in mind. And how will it help them? How will it provide they're looking for? How will this answer their question? Yeah, always, always think of them. And yeah, like again, probably blog, blog writing and SEO is, is probably all of the podcasts that we could do. We could you could you could specialize in and, and do a whole episode on on its own. And I've started doing you know I've started doing video first. Right, so I record a five-minute video or do the newsletter and blog, mm -hmm. 
based on the outputs and the transcript of that, I get AI to create a certain chunk of it, and then I go back over the top of it. So I'm starting with the first ten percent. I'm giving it the last ten percent, and the AI is doing the bit in the middle. It, it works for me. So there's yeah. there's lots of creative ways to use it, but yes, ultimately it's got to add value in the first place. Otherwise, what what's the point? Yeah, um, yeah. Other than being dishonest, uh, I've honestly uh, used ChatGPT to bounce ideas for lesson plans for the students. Yeah. On that aspect, uh, back and forth, just thinking of like, how can I integrate this and this? You know, let me see if ChatGPT give me about like 12 ideas that, and then it'll come up with one that that I find. And I'm like, I look at it, I'm like, oh, wow, that is actually, that's a connection I didn't make, but it's great. Now let's, now let's awesome. take this and develop it and work on it and and go. Yeah, well, that's yeah. it. And I think even just as, 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 a, as a business owner, helping educate yourself about complex to topics like digital marketing, how you can get better as you know before the point where you're ready to pay an external a third party to support you because they're the specialists and i'd always advise that you get to that point and, and take that on board because that's the best but you know what one of my friends was giving me investing advice the other day around stocks and shares and he'd found a new strategy that was working for him he said you know go and look at this web page and I'm, oh, I'm not an investor and i read the web page I was like this is all why would you do that i don't understand why you would do that why does that how can you make money out of that and, and i plumbed it into chat gpt and i was like explain it to a 10 year old and it came up with an analogy of like a lemonade stand and it was explaining the lemonade stand thing to me and it was like so if you wanted to do this and you could sell it at that price yeah. i was like oh oh i get it that's beautiful right right yeah, right for me <laughs> <laughs> i can't do that uh, so then to, to come back to um the, the last two questions that i ask every guest um well first up 